I don't even know how to properly react to what happened in the main event tonight at Backlash. Um, it's one of those situations where you think it's a possibility and you kind of prepare yourself for it to possibly happen. But when it happens, even though you kind of prepared yourself, it still doesn't even measure to your reaction when it happens. So I'm kind of lost for words, kind of speechless that they actually pulled the trigger on what happened in the main event. Um, so pretty fucking crazy. But um, yeah, um, hello everyone. Um, welcome to my WWE Backlash 2017 pay-per-view. Of course, Backlash was live on the WWE Network Souls pay-per-view uh, tonight. And overall, I gotta say, coming out of Backlash, um, very whatever show, wasn't very enjoyable if you ask me. I mean, nothing bad was on the show, but nothing must-see was on the show as well. It was kind of just there, felt like a regular TV uh, show, honestly, and there's just not really that much to talk about. So, um, definitely by far the worst SmackDown Live pay-per-view um, since the brand split, in my opinion. So, not a lot to talk about in terms of backlash. So, if this review isn't exactly the most enthusiastic or interesting, it's because I just honestly don't really have much to say in a lot of the, the matches. So, that's why. So, that's a little reasoning behind that in case you're wondering like, why wow, he doesn't really care. Because I honestly don't. I'm just going to put that out right now. But, um, yeah, let's get into the show. Of course, we had the one-hour kickoff show, um, which featured Ty Dillinger versus Aiden English, which was, you know, a fine match. Aiden English uh, worked on Ty Dillinger, got some heat throughout the entire match. Ty, Ty Dillinger had his comebacks. Aiden English cut him off, and, of course, Ty Dillinger got the uh, win at the end with a tiebreaker. Which to me it was just kind of dumb because you now had Ty Dillinger beat Aiden English three times in a row. So I know they're probably gonna, that's probably gonna be his gimmick now in SmackDown, just be like the pre-show guy and the guy just wins you know matches against the lower mid-card guys. But it's just like come on, at least do something different. Have Aiden English win, but you know I don't really care. It is what it is. Ty Dillinger wins. You know not a bad match at all. Actually I thought it was pretty decent. So there's that. And then we go to the show, which opened up with Shinsuke Nakamura versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, you know on paper. It sounds like having Nakamura start the show is the smart thing to do, but in actuality it really wasn't. This match was just good, nothing great, which, you know, is negative for the situation because I feel like this match definitely should have been great, um, but it wasn't that. I feel like they really kind of misutilized Nakamura in this match. You really had Ziggler down him, utilized his amateur wrestling skills on Nakamura the entire time. Nakamura was kind of showboating and trying to get his moves in the beginning of it, but then Ziggler just cut him down and pretty much Ziggler was working on Nakamura, getting heat, yelling, you know, that he's the man and, you know, trying to ground Nakamura and preventing him from really doing anything in this match. So I feel like they kind of hurt, this match kind of hurt Nakamura actually more than doing any good for him because I feel like Nakamura didn't really get any offense in this match besides like the beginning and end of it. So, um, I don't know. I feel like this match definitely should have been great, but since it wasn't that, I feel like this was kind of a, a fail on their part for uh, getting, giving a first good impression for Nakamura. Like I said, too much offense for Ziggler, not enough for Nakamura. Nakamura gets a victory after hitting Kinsasha on the ropes. Ziggler goes for a super kick. Nakamura t counters into an exploder, follows it with a Kinsasha for the 1-2-3 victory. So, Nakamura defeats Dolph Ziggler. Good match, but... For this standard, and considering they've had millions of matches the past couple weeks, uh, you know, in house shows and dark matches, this should have been great. So, no excuse why it shouldn't have been. But it wasn't, so what can you do? Uh, from there, I'm going to go to the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match, the Usos versus Breezango. Um, this was entertaining. You know, Breezango, very comedy heavy in this match where, you know, Tyler Breeze playing the janitor role and he was, you know, rolling around the ring while one of the Usos was trying to uh, splash on him, but he kept getting out of the way. Uh, eventually, he turned into an old grandma, which got a grandma chant, which was pretty hilarious. So, um, it was good comedy heavy at the beginning. Even the Usos were laughing at what was going on. Uh, match quality itself was fine. Fun Dago got a nice hot tag after Breeze uh, tagged him in. Uh, it was going pretty crazy for a while. Tyler Breeze almost took some kid out in the second row when uh, Usos threw him out over the barricade. He almost flew over and kicked some kids in the face. So that was pretty, pretty uh, close spot there. But the uh, crowd was very heavily behind Breezango. Um, Fandango looked like he was going to go for the win when he was going for a signature leg drop at the top rope. But when the Usos grabbed his legs, the other Usos hit a super kick and, counter and covered him for the 1-2-3. So the Usos retained SmackDown Tag Team titles. Like I said, entertaining match. Not really much more besides that. Uh, from there on, we go to Sami Zayn versus Baron Corbin. I felt like this was a good match, a good solid match here. Sorry about that, but yeah, Sami Zayn, Baron Corbin, that was a good match, you know, good back and forth action, that Baron Corbin looked really good grinding Sami Zayn, and of course Sami Zayn was playing that underdog, um, you know, fighting spirit while you try to, you know, do whatever you can to get the upper hand, but Baron Corbin would easily just shut him down and, you know, cut him off any kind of offense he would get. Sami Zayn had a pretty vicious, well, not vicious, but, you know, vicious on his, his end, considering he kind of almost missed um, that uh, moonsault that the um, barricade on the outside. 
that was pretty um, a dangerous spot right there because Sami Zayn almost killed himself on it. But uh, Baron Corbin did good. I feel like him and Sami Zayn just went out there and just had a, a good match. Nothing much to it. Really wasn't anything to say about it besides that. Um, clever ending though, which I, I am 50-50 on because, you know, the person that lost. Uh, Sami Zayn hits a boot on Baron Corbin, which would lead into a Hoover kick um, for the 1-2-3 victory. So Sami Zayn gets a surprise victory um, by hitting his finish out of nowhere. Um, very happy that Sami Zayn won because I feel like it's a much needed victory for him. He hasn't really won a big match in I don't know how long, so I feel like this definitely did one is for him. But on the other hand, I feel like Baron Corbin's treatment um, ever since post-WrestleMania has just been terrible. They haven't really done anything with him, and he's just kind of just been losing every single time he's had a match. So wasn't a fan of Baron Corbin losing, but Sami Zayn definitely needed the victory as well. So good solid match. Enjoyed that. Probably one of the better matches in the show, honestly. So that was good stuff. Uh, from there, I'm going to go to the six women tag team match. Of course, Natalia, uh, Carmella, and Tamina taking on Becky Lynch, Naomi, and Charlotte Flair. Uh, this was what it was. You know, Becky Lynch and Tamina started the match off, and of course, Becky Lynch tagged in. Um, Charlotte and her and, and Carmella went out for a while, and then, of course, Natalia tagged in. Or, no, no, Naomi tagged in, and her and Carmella went out for a while, and then, of course, Naomi tagged in. Of course, uh, you know, they worked on Naomi for the majority of the match, and of course, you know, uh, Becky Lynch with a hot tag towards the end of the match, and of course, you know, the numbers game got to her. Um, Tamina got involved, and Becky Lynch trying to um, the, lock into disarmor on, on Natalia. Uh, like I said, uh, Tamina got involved, and of course Natalia was able to lock in the sharpshooter on Becky Lynch uh, to to uh, get the submission win. So the, mo the welcoming committee gets the victory. Kind of shocked by that. Looks like they're building up uh, challenges though for Naomi. So I guess Naomi's going to face there. It's going one of them down the line for the title. But um, I just I thought for sure Charlotte, Becky, and uh, Naomi would get the win. But uh, what can you do? Can't really do much about it. So, welcome committee gets the win. That's that. And from there, I'm going to go to which I thought was match of the night. United States Championship match. Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles. This was a great match here. Um, great uh, back and forth action for both men. Love the counters and interaction having each other. A lot of smooth transitions. Loved when AJ would go for like the, the springboard moonsault into uh, reverse DDT. Owens countered that into a super kick, which I thought was a great counter right there. Uh, you know, just Owens playing the heel and AJ, you know, trying to get... You know, scaring Owens off, I guess. You know, Owens would run out of the ring and AJ would run out and Owens would run back in. You know, kind of playing mind games with, by AJ. So I thought that was great. Uh, eventually, you know, AJ's knee would come to factor after that springboard moonsault that he missed. Um, he actually favored that knee and Owens actually worked on that knee, you know, blocking various submission holds on it, like the ankle lock, um, you know, DDTing it. Um, just various different maneuvers, a half, uh, half leg Boston Crab on it. Um, was just targeting the leg of AJ Styles. I thought the work Kevin Owens was doing on that leg was tremendous and it told a great story. And, you know, it would show and AJ would favor it going for, you know, the Styles clash off the, the apron, which, you know, Owens was able to fight out of because of AJ's knee. Uh, they brawled on the outside, got back in the ring. AJ went for the, the, the phenomenal forearm, wasn't able to hit it because of his knee, so he drowned down. Um, Owens go for the power powerbomb, was not able to hit it. Um, just a lot of good back and forth action, and I thought the knee played a great role in this match as well. So tremendous stuff from both men. Really enjoyed what they were doing. The brawl on the outside, AJ was able to hit the phenomenal forearm there um, on the outside, which took a lot out of him because he couldn't really get up after that. And then he went for the the uh, Styles Clash on the announcer's table, but Kevin Owens was able to get out of it. AJ's leg falls through the hole where you know the, the monitor is that, so AJ falls through there, gets trapped there. Kevin Owens rolls in the ring. AJ Styles gets counted out. So Kevin Owens retains the championship via count out. Um, I know some people were kind of mad because, you know, people just don't like count finishes. But I feel like the way they did this one with the work of AJ Styles' legs and the fact that AJ Styles' leg got caught and he couldn't really get out of it because I was injured leg that got caught, um, I thought it made all the sense in the world. So a uh, great match from him and, uh, and uh, between Owens and AJ. Really enjoyed that, like I said, match tonight. And I'm looking forward to the rematch because, you know, it's going to be even better. So... Yeah, that was a great way to end the match and uh, continue this feud as well. Uh, from there, I'm going to go to Luke Harper versus Eric Rowan, which I thought was, you know, actually a good match. I didn't think it was bad. I know the crowd wasn't into it. I know a lot of people weren't into it either, but I felt like, you know, it was a good back-and-forth action match. I feel like, you know, it wasn't really one point where one man had upper hand over the other. I feel like it was good back-and-forth action wrestling um, for two big men. So I can't really complain about that. They stumbled on the, up, out, uh, the outside, uh, played in the steel steps a little bit. But um, that's about it. Uh, it was a short match, really not much into it. Like the ending, though, with Eric Rowan kind of like vying for the mask, and, you know, Luke Harper gave him a super kick, fall on the ropes, gets up, another super kick, fall on the ropes, and, of course, Luke Harper hit him with the discus, uh, discus lariat, which looked more like 
like a chop to the chest instead of a lariat, but what can you do? Luke Harper gets the win, much needed win for him. Like I said, good solid match, just no one really cared for it. And then we go to the main event, which was the WWE Championship match, Randy Orton versus Jinder Mahal. Boring match. Um, what can you say? Randy Orton attacks Jinder Mahal before the match starts, trying to take him out, trying to take him out of commission. Uh, match starts, and then of course, you know, numbers game. Gets the Randy Orton after the Singh brothers get involved, uh, which Jinder Mahal would take advantage of. Jinder Mahal would work on Randy Orton's arm for the entire match, which is commentary. Fairly mentioned that Jinder Mahal is working on Randy Orton's shoulder, so that way he couldn't hit the RKO. Um, so, had they mentioned that, I probably would have been more invested, but since the commentating team com completely didn't even mention it, I felt like Jinder Mahal was just working the shoulder for no reason and thought it was a boring match, so... I, I could say for story purposes, it, the match is a little better than, you know, I thought it was. But, yeah, Jinder Mahal had worked the shoulder. Uh, Randy Orton finally hit an RKO on Jinder Mahal out of nowhere. But when he, you know, went to pin him, the Singh brothers pulled um, Jinder Mahal out of the ring. Randy Orton completely just killed the Singh brothers. He he suplexed one of them and nearly broke their goddamn neck, it looked like. Um, gave them both, you know, signature DDT. But after that, Jinder Mahal comes up behind Randy Orton, hits the Colossal, I believe it's called, his finishing move. And one, two, three. Jinder Mahal is the WWE champion. Ugh. I don't like Jinder Mahal. I've never made that a secret. I've always disliked Jinder Mahal. I just, you know, I'm all for something new. I know it's a lot of people's points are, well, it's something new and fresh. Why are you mad? Yes, but here's the thing. This guy legit went from jobbing to Mojo Rawley a month ago the WWE Champion. How do you even do that? Now, if they built him up for months and properly, then would I be okay with it? Absolutely. But since he literally went from jobbing the Mojo Rawley, of all people, a month ago, to being WWE Champion, that, you just don't do that. You just don't do that. And the fact that Jinder Mahal will go down in history as WWE Champion, to me, that in itself is absolutely just a travesty. It was bad enough we had Bray Wyatt as WWE Champion a few months ago, but now that we have Jinder Mahal as WWE Champion, God, 2017 has been a dark day for the WWE title. It really has. It went from AJ Styles to Jinder Mahal in five months. I don't see how that happens, but it did. AJ Styles, John Cena, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton, Jinder Mahal. Ah, and, you know, I'll see where it goes. Maybe he loses the title in SmackDown Live this Tuesday. Who knows? But um, Jinder Mahal is WWE Champion. I know it's part of their big play for India, but... You just, that's your championship. You don't throw it on someone just because of his nationality and become big and bigger in a different country. You just don't do that, in my opinion. And it's nothing against, like, nationalities. I'm not, like, saying, like, oh, he's Indian, don't get the title. I just feel like you need to properly build people. You just don't throw it on titles because, oh, you know, we're playing for India. He's Indian, let's give him the title. That's not how you do things, in my opinion. You got to build people up for that championship and give it to them because they deserve it. Not because, oh, look at his nationality. So I just think that was a horrible idea in their in their minds. But what can you do? Born main event, Jinder Mahal's champion. Not going to be a good time for SmackDown, I can tell you that. But, um, yeah, overall backlash. Um, very whatever show, like I said. Really not much to talk about. It was, you know, one match show as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it did have some, you know, good stuff, like I said. Nothing too bad, but nothing to go out of your way to see. So, that's my review for backlash. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please like below. If you guys would like in the comment section below, leave your guys' thoughts as well on Backlash, what you guys thought about, you know, more specifically Jinder Mahal winning the title. Um, if you agree with my decisions on some of the matches, if you don't agree with them, whatever Backlash related, feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching the video.